So I'm putting a concrete jacket around a wooden bridge piling. That's a piece of cake. But I'm still not clear on exactly how that's all going to happen or why I need to be underwater. This kind of commercial diving has very little in common with scuba diving. With a rig like this, air is pumped down from the surface. That tank on my back, that's for emergency use only, which I'm really looking forward to not needing. The face piece contains a metal nose blocker, commonly called a booger buster, which comes in handy for equalizing your ears at depth. But this river is only six feet deep, so the booger buster is really just one more thing in my way. So this right here is your purge. Yeah. This is your uh, nose blocking device. Your booger buster. Booger buster. Right. This is your dial breath. If it gets harder to breathe, pull it down. Okay. Bring it up on over. Yeah, put the rear of your head in first. Make sure that chin pad is underneath your chin. The booger buster's out and pull the hat down onto your face and wiggle up your shoulders. There you go. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. Paul, can you handle? Got you loud and clear. How about me? Yeah, you sound great. Right after that. Okay. No, just go ahead and slide in. Slide in on my ass? Slide in. <laughs> Back in 322 BC, Alexander the Great used divers during the Siege of Tyre. Today, a good underwater welder with lots of diving experience can make $300,000 a year. None of this is relevant to the task at hand. These are just some things I know. Wow, Paul, this is some kind of crazy <laughs> Yep. Unbelievable. Can't see but I can breathe, which is such a plus. <laughs> Most definitely. So you can hear me, but nobody else can hear me, right? Yeah. All right. So is that Leon who's in here as well? Yeah, Leon, is this your safety diver? Terrific. So I guess now you should ask Jared if I should go over to pylon number one and start pulling crap off the bottom. Yes, you should. I can tell you that for a fact. Excellent. Divers headed over to uh, pile one to start removing debris. All right, I'm going to go down and have a look, OK? Roger that. Over time, the river current pushes rocks around these bridge piles. I'll need to clear them away to make room for the jacket. Paul, the job is grab the rock and put it up on the float. Just pull it away from the pile, probably three, four feet, so it's out of the way, so we have enough room to get the uh, jacket on. You'll have a two to three foot area all the way around that piling that's fairly flat. All right, well, tell the guys that I don't feel any more rocks around the bottom. So I'm, I'm guessing that we're done. Roger. I can barely hold my head up. The one upside to working underwater, the hundred pounds of gear strapped to your back doesn't feel that heavy. Getting out of the water, on the other hand, well, that's just one more thing for the old guy to complain about. Paul, is this, uh, is the task completed? Yep, task is completed. You can come on up now. Great. Divers out of the way up. That's like, great. I mean, thank God. <laughs> Good job, Mike. Coming up. Diver out of hat. Divers out of the hat. No Roger, words. Divers out of the hat. No words, guys. That's insane. It's tough. Three, four, five hours at a time. Six, seven, eight. Yep. No. No. Nope. Not tenable. Yeah. Don't know how you do it. Glad you do it. Don't know how you do it. Then again, you're 27, so f you. <laughs> you did a good job, I think. And then we'll just start throwing some wire ties where the rebar overlaps. Give it at one twist like this. And then you grab it with the pliers and you pull it in. Yep. It's like that. Put it around it. You're just twisting one side, yep. right? Well, twist it on itself. 
pull and twist. Mm -hmm. You want to try one underwater? Yeah, sure. All right. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. 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 oh no. <laughs> my heart just dropped. Oh that ain't right. Oh man. That ain't right, man. Almost dropped the camera. Wiring this rebar cage is important because when we pour the concrete. We want the steel to remain in place where it's most effective in reinforcing the jacket. So if the jacket's gonna go here mm -hmm. and the concrete's gonna get poured down into it, what happens when the concrete goes underwater? Does it harden the same way? Yes, it underwater does. Underwater as it does in air? Yes. Concrete doesn't harden because it dries. It hardens because it sets. Setting is the completion of a chemical reaction. Portland cement is the key to concrete's ability to set underwater. Let's try to pick the bottom up and scoot it in. Right. But first things first. Watch your fingers on those nails. Yeah, thanks. There we go. Ah, aha. The fiberglass jacket is supposed to close completely around the pile with a little convincing from a ratchet strap. But this jacket isn't cooperating. Why not? The answer is most likely underwater. So on a scale of one to 10, is how does this rate in terms of pain in the ass? Like, uh, this one right now, this one's a... Uh, <laughs> like you're right up there? Pain, yeah. No, nine, okay. Yeah, they're usually, uh, they go on a little easier, but... Jared suspects the jacket is getting hung up on the bottom, almost as though a certain diver failed to completely clear the area. The problem is this. Right. You can see it's about two inches there on this side of the seam, and that should be flush with this. This whole side needs to come down. Well, I am not putting that godforsaken hat back on. Let's see what the pressure washer can do. Just try to go straight up and down with it. All right. Damn, mud stinks. It's a shame, you can't smell it. I just feel like I got a lot of stuff out of the way, actually. She's going down. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. We're on to something now. There it is. The next step is to seal the fiberglass jacket with self-tapping screws and an air-powered screwdriver. Small burst on the trigger, though. Right. Just because uh, that air tank's small. OK. Right, so, so yeah, kind of like a <laughs> then, then let off and <laughs> Do I have to make that sound when I do you it? You do, when, uh, you absolutely <laughs> have to. Exactly. See, it's good. You've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> you got to push. Uh-oh. When you go to do it, you just do short, strong pushes. Push hard. Let it go. Get it. There you go. Perfect. The jacket is buttoned up. There she come. I can feel it. All right, now yeah. we're ready. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Bring it up in. Yep. Yeah. Go that side there. Try to shove it in. Yep. How many times you hit your head on this deck? Uh, a couple thousand. Jeez. Yep, try to bring it up. <laughs> so the concrete that's going in is forcing the water out, basically. Correct. So we got a little bit to go. You want to overfill it, bring it up a little higher. Can you slow it down, Paul? Slow it down. It's off right now. Well, let's go ahead and do the next one, Jared, then put some in the middle. All right. Back's killing me. Neck's killing me. Wrists hurt. Knees are sore. Hamstrings are shot. Quads are aching. So what makes it exciting is as the tide comes in, the water raises up, thereby giving you less and less headroom. So you think you've adjusted. Ring your bell again. Rinse and repeat. Yep. One inch. We're up. All right, all stop. All stop. <laughs> I'm not going to say it was fun, <laughs> but it was awesome. Thank you. The truth is, the work really never stops. These guys are going to go on and on until they're done, and then there's another bridge and another pylon and another jacket. 
some more rebar, some more hammering, some more concrete, more Charlie Brown. It never ends. Unless you're me.